episode four, Kubrick as an inspiration. In his lifetime, Kubrick was nominated for 13 Academy Awards, however only received one for Best Special Effects for 2001 A Space Odyssey. 2001 has been cited as one of the best and most influential science fiction films of all time, and Kubrick's other films such as Dr. Strangelove were chosen by a poll conducted by Sight and Sound, a London film journal comprised of an international panel of film professionals, to be among the top 10 films of all time, the recognition of which attests to the endurance of Kubrick's films and cement them as masterpieces of their respective genres, as well as film as a whole. While still in high school, a young Steven Spielberg went to the theater to see Dr. Strangelove. I was aware of the power of Kubrick as a director when I first saw, for the first time, Dr. Strangelove, which was when I was standing in line uh, in San Jose. I was in high school. We lived, I was, I was in my last year of high school, as a matter of fact. And uh, I was standing in a very long line with my father jumped out of a car. He had found me in line. It was a rainy day in San Jose. He ran over to me with a letter from the Selective Service. That's our version of when you're drafted into the Army. And handed me this letter and waited until I opened it. I opened it and it basically said, you must report for your Army physical. And, and that's when I kind of became aware that my life could be over in a year. And my dad was completely aware of that. And my dad said, let's go home. And I said, no, I want to watch the film. Uh, so I st stood there in line alone with this letter and I went into the theater and Strange Love began and I had a letter in my back pocket and when Strange Love was finished and I left the theater and I stood on the curb waiting for my father to pick me up I had totally forgotten that I had a letter threatening to draft me into the United States Armed Services and that's when I first became aware of the power of Stanley Kubrick. Spielberg would later go on to become good friends with Kubrick, both bouncing ideas off one another and enjoying having someone to talk to about film. In that same interview, Spielberg goes on to say, Every phone conversation was just an inspiration for me personally. Um, Stanley liked information. I supplied him with a lot of information. Sometimes information he asked me for, other information I volunteered. But in getting to know him, I understood what the, what the dynamic of the relationship was that St Stanley would give me advice. He'd collaborate with me. I'd tell him a story I was interested in directing as a movie, and he'd ask me all the tough questions. What do you find interesting about that story? Why do you want to make that picture? Gee, that sounds kind of bo boring to me. How can you make that interesting? I mean, he was challenging me constantly. He gave me as much, if not more, than I feel I ever, ever could possibly give him. First, he gave me all his movies, and then he gave me his friendship, which meant he gave me his time and there's no greater gift a person can give to another person. Kubrick had a heavy hand in shaping Spielberg both as a person as well as a filmmaker. After Kubrick's death, Steven Spielberg went on to write his own version of Kubrick's film concept, AI, based on a treatment the late director left behind. Though we will never know if Kubrick's AI would have employed the same visual designs as Spielberg's, the special effects were breathtaking at the time and are a testament as to why Kubrick wanted to work with Spielberg for the film. Another director who has heavily been influenced by Kubrick, though only through film and not on a personal level, is fellow Academy Award winner Guillermo del Toro. Del Toro has gone on record saying, I admire Kubrick greatly. He's often accused of being a prodigious technician and rigid intellectual, which people say make his films very cold. I don't agree. The famous scenes in Full Metal Jacket, like the induction with Arlie Ermey, where he renames the soldiers and reshapes them into subhuman maggots, had a particular impact on me. Those are absolutely virtuous pieces of filmmaking. The way many of the scenes in Del Toro's films play out seem to be a nod to Kubrick's work. The candlelit scenes in Crimson Peaks, for example, bear many semblances to that of Barry Lyndon. Many of the top filmmakers who are working currently list Kubrick as one of their biggest inspirations. Names such as Martin Scorsese, Quentin Tarantino, David Fincher, the list could go on. However, one thing holds true. Kubrick was a master of his craft and shall forever be held up as one of the best directors of all time. Though many called him a pessimist, Kubrick was more precisely a pragmatist. He himself sums up his views on humanity and the plight of humankind beautifully when he stated, however vast the darkness, we must supply our own light. Through his early years, Kubrick began to develop filming techniques he would use throughout his career in the film industry. Simply looking through Kubrick's early photograph essays, it's easy to see the keen eye he had for composition, something which he did eventually translate to film. Throughout his career as a filmmaker, Kubrick developed all manners of filmmaking techniques that cinema continued to use to this day. 
innovations such as low-light photography and steadicam operation. Kubrick not only revolutionized the use of particular filmmaking techniques, he also pushed the boundaries on what could be shown in cinema, arguably making it more readily acceptable to show nudity, sex, violence, and harrowing subject matter in cinema. Through his early attempts at pushing the boundaries, presenting a pedophilic love a man has for a young girl as a dark comedy, to developing a story about nuclear holocaust as a societal satire, to showing the world the exploits of a good-for-nothing adolescent in a gang causing senseless violence, Kubrick always push the boundaries whenever possible, even more apparent in the level of inspiration he provided for younger generations of filmmakers throughout the ages. It is without question that Kubrick has had a heavy hand in developing not only how films are produced, but the subject matter and thoughts which can be presented in them as well. Thank you for joining me on my mission to document Stanley Kubrick's life and achievements as a filmmaker. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more episodes, whether we delve deeper into the individual production of Kubrick's films, or we discuss the career of a different filmmaker entirely. Personally, we would love to discuss the lives of Guillermo del Toro, David Lynch, John Carpenter, among the many other filmmakers we hold so dearly on this channel. Your comments can help shape the future of this series, so please don't forget to let us know who you'd like us to document next. Until next time, I'm Marshall, and this is my Secret Black Project.